Hello. My name is Susie Berry. I am a Trust volunteer and I am going to be steering you through this presentation on effective communications. Here you see what we are attempting to achieve in the presentation and the five areas we should be working on in order to reach these objectives why and how communications can help your U3A, how to create good communications, how to choose the most effective methods, how to use digital and social channels to enhance your communications and reach even larger numbers, and how to develop your own writing skills. We are going to be setting you some tasks along the way and it is up to you whether you press pause and complete them immediately, as you would in a live workshop, or watch through to the end and go back to them later. What is communications? Note the difference between the two words. It's very easy to be confused. Remember the first is what it is, and the second, how you choose to do it. Here you see a variety of communication tools. Joined up communications are by far the most impactful and effective. If you can achieve the same or a similar style and brand on all platforms, it amplifies your messages considerably. Your U3A or network may use some or all of these platforms to a greater or lesser extent. And we will be going into some more detail on each in a minute. In this graphic, your website is placed at the centre of your communications. As for growth, the goal is to drive new traffic onto the website. People who learn more about U3A may then wish to join you. For internal communications, you will probably have to use more than one method in order to reach all your members, both digital, such as website and email, or offline, such as PDF newsletters. External communications can take many forms, including social media, depending on what you are trying to achieve and the audience you are trying to reach. Nearly all U3As have members who are not on email, although it is noticeable how many more have taken the plunge as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is vital that these members are kept fully informed, although it may take extra work in order to do so. This might include posting or delivering hard copy of communications that have been emailed to other members, or organising a buddy system where friends are prepared to print off or share information from the website or emails. Some members do have digital devices such as laptops or tablets, but may be nervous of using them. They may have a smartphone, but only use it to make and receive phone calls. Do you run computer or IT skills groups for beginners? Or might you have members who are prepared to help one-to-one? -one? The way U3A communicates became more important than ever as soon as the COVID-19 lockdown came into force. In order to keep members in touch, connected and encourage new members to join us, some of this list reflect activities not achievable during the pandemic and when large gatherings such as monthly meetings and study days are on hold. However, websites and printed media are not affected. In addition to using social media, many interest groups are continuing to operate by email and virtual online platforms such as Teams and Zoom. And this multimedia approach has many advantages for now and in the future. 
these facilities enabled committee meetings to be held and also AGMs where necessary. A mixture of virtual and face-to-face -face meetings may well prove to be the way forward in years to come, allowing networks and regional committees to communicate while saving travel costs and time as well. How do you get people to listen to what you are saying? This applies equally to your own members and the outside world. These are some of the questions which you should be asking before you send any communications, whether internal or external. There is absolutely no point in producing anything unless it grabs people's interest sufficiently for them to look at it. Communications that are targeted to reach the right audience in the most impactful way. Storytelling is the new PR buzzword. It's about finding stories which connect with members and the wider public that tell the interesting things we are about. Sources of this can be members, shared learning or research projects, and interest group activities. The stories should reflect your U3A message of learning, staying active, community building, the joy of being in the third age of your life. Nowadays, real journalists aren't just looking at press releases, they are looking at websites, blogs and social media to hear and find stories from your organisation. If you do issue a press release, make sure the key message is in the first line. You can expand on it later, otherwise it will go straight in the bin. What do you think makes a good or interesting story? Try to identify which of the points in this list can be applied to your story to make it feel relevant and up to date. And remember the key message of sociable learning, contribution and fun. Practice interviewing another member to find an interesting story about their U3A. If you are alone, you can do it on the phone or, with the person's permission, over telecommunications channels such as Zoom or FaceTime. Alternatively, your own interest group may have a new and exciting story to tell. Once you have your story, write a brief and punchy report on what you find out and consider where it might work and on what platform. Your style and the audience you reach will vary according to which platform you choose. For example, the same story would look very different in a tweet as opposed to the version in your U3A newsletter or the magazine Third Edge Matters. These are just two examples of writing styles. Blogs began in the early 1990s as an online journal for individuals to publish thoughts and stories on their own website. Bloggers then share their blog posts with other internet users. Blogs can be interactive and comments posted. Ravenshead U3A uses its website as a blog with cryptic crosswords, etc. A press release, as we mentioned before, must have the key message in the first line so the journalist will be tempted to find out more. It's always good to have a quote from a participant if possible, but do avoid references which are only of interest to the people involved. For example, Mary Smith very kindly made the tea, as opposed to a huge cake generously donated by AC Bakery was rattled raising over £500 for the NHS. A note to the editor is primarily about relevant facts that can't be fitted into a short press release. If you wish to embargo a press release to go out on a certain date, you must put that at the top. 
boilerplate is just a few lines about the organisation you're representing, which contains all the key messages and tells journalists about your organisation. Don't forget to include a photograph if possible, preferably as high a resolution as you can manage. So what? is obviously a reaction you wish to avoid. Did you know well-being is important? So what? My U3A thinks well-being is important. So what? However, yesterday my U3A held the first well-being conference with Esther Ranson as our key speaker. That immediately excites some interest and tempts the reader to go further into the story. Don't forget the key messages of U3A. They are pertinent in both internal and external communications. Consistency in message helps to amplify the profile of U3A. Now it's your turn. In your own time, Using the interview which you conducted earlier, have a go at writing it up as a story and a press release, working in the U3A message. Try and use your journalism skills and apply the press release rules we have just shown you. See if you can think of a photograph which you would like to accompany it. Consider how you might need to adapt your story for different platforms and which ones might be best suited. Social media is still a subject which divides our members. Many love it. Witness the success of the Facebook groups during the coronavirus lockdown, while others still have a profound distrust of it all. In this day and age, we really cannot afford not to embrace it. The internet was distrusted by many when it was first invented, and look at it now. Social media has become an integral part of the wider world, and for many people, the way to access news and be part of the national conversation, including journalists. In social media, we swipe, click, scroll, retweet, like or share posts with our followers, depending on the platform. And if you are a respective source, and not fake news, it has a number of uses, not least helping to raise the profile of your U3A. We want our content to grow in popularity so that it has thousands of engagements. And when that number is considerable, it is called going viral and may have raised your profile beyond the social media world. For closed social media platforms, such as a closed Facebook page or WhatsApp, it can facilitate discussions and connection within a defined group. So what does the National Office use? It uses Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and most recently, Instagram. Maybe your U3A also uses these as well as other platforms like WhatsApp or Flickr. You can put up stories that you've written together with a photograph. WhatsApp is a good way of organizing co and communicating for groups. And Flickr is good if you want to put up a large number of pictures. There are many others and new ones are being developed all the time. We hope to have a code of conduct and advice on social media platforms coming soon to the national website in the advice area. As an example, this is how Twitter works. 
but the rules generally apply to most platform social posts. Twitter is different in that you are limited in the number of characters you can use, but generally the more engaging or unusual your content, the more you stand out, the more engagement, such as retweets, shares, or even new followers you will get. On Twitter, you want followers to retweet your post to their followers, with the hope that some of these new people will be interested and follow you in return. Social media can reach a very large audience. On platforms such as Twitter and Facebook, it is always worth adding a new and interesting picture or a mini video or GIF to the post as it makes it more eye-catching and likely to encourage more engagement. Using the at sign is a way of crediting other companies and bringing them into your conversation without going into detail. For example, we finished the walk with an excellent lunch at Coach and Horses. The reader can then look up Coach and Horses and the pub will also know you have credited them and in return they may retweet you or comment on your post. Hashtags are also used to group ideas together. You might hashtag volunteer week. Something already in existence brings you into the conversation. A hashtag you create will bring others into the conversation if they use your hashtag. Now it's your turn. We use Twitter as an example because its limited number of characters is great practice to write something engaging as short as possible. Practice writing a tweet, even if you don't use Twitter. You may wish to press pause while you're doing it. Don't forget, it's 280 characters, including spaces, which is roughly 36 words plus a link. Just have a go and see if you can write your story in less than 40 words. Lastly, always carefully consider the photographs you use. Is copyright involved? Have the people pictured given their consent? Does it portray the message you are trying to send? Try to make the photograph not look posed. Lines of U3A members looking directly at the camera is only of interest to those in the picture. Use ones where members are more relaxed, maybe talking to each other and laughing, or concentrating on the tasks they are doing. Now it's your turn to communicate with others in your U3A network or region and discuss how you may best keep your members engaged and also advertise your activities to the wider world, spreading the U3A message. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it was helpful. Please stay in touch. Goodbye.